Mm -hmm. You should start all these out with Metallica. Hello! No, that's copyrighted music. I can't start with Metallica. Um, otherwise, I'll kick it off YouTube. Anyway, um, this guy's bothering me. Uh, welcome to Warp 9 Wednesday, brought to you by Extra Tier Gaming and Warp 9 Comics, coming to you live from Warp 9 Comics. Who's this uh, sexy gentleman next to me? Well, as you guys know, I like to have little helpers from time to time, um, considering little T wasn't in the building today. I have the... Uh, which one are you again? I have John Grosjean. That's right. He's got a twin brother. This no, guy. I know who this he is. Guy. I can tell them apart in the lineup. I know. Twin jokes are funny. Sure. It seems uh, like every other Wednesday you hand me the wrong pull box. Yeah. <laughs> That's happened maybe once in like the last year. Um, so this is John Grosjean. John's uh, helped me out before, and he's helped the shop out before. He's done a bunch of uh, like our little signs that we have that say like three weeks ago comics, five weeks ago comics. He did all that stuff. Um, and his, uh, his brother and, and him collaborated on doing the little layout for the stream here. He's a very talented man, so show him some love, um, if, if you want, or whatever. Um, so, as, uh, as always, basically today is, uh, Warp 9 Wednesday. It's, it's new comic book day, man. There's all sorts of cool stuff going on. We got lots of little, uh, little things to show you. I got a lot of toys and stuff. And then, uh, obviously we got some comic book roundup, and, um, yeah, we'll go from there. So, um, feel like telling the people anything? Are you? Hey, that's why awesome. I had him. That 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 entertainment, the the, the wow factor he brings. Oh, what do you want me to say? You just you, you told them everything <laughs> about me already. Yeah, it's what I do. It's what I do. Uh, why don't we start with those guys? Sure. Just the one? Uh, both. 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 So first things first, for you Stranger Things fans, uh, these are done by Funko. They're just like little three and three quarter inch uh, little guys. Uh, the packaging is really, really cool. So for uh, Stranger Things fans, I mean, there's a lot of cool things out there, but I, I would have to say having a little, little figure guys is, is kind of fun. I, we get asked for, uh, we get asked for toys all the time. Um, so these just came in. So we only got like one set each because we don't know how they're gonna do. But they're pretty sweet, and they're only uh, twenty bucks a piece for three figures. So they do, uh, you know, right in the budget, right in a sweet spot. So if you like those, we do have them in stock. Just so you know. Uh, next things next, we got. DC Icon. So I have talked to... Just don't want to toss them wherever. No big deal. Um, just DC... Both. Uh, well, we'll start with the Superman. Then we'll go to the Batman. So DC Icons. Um, we've talked about DC Icons in the past. Uh, most recently, we had uh, the Super Sons 2-pack. Um, and then uh, ooh, Nightwing and Supergirl. These are, I think, the last two in the DC Icons line. We've got Batman. We've got Superman. Uh, Rebirth Batman, Rebirth Superman. The reason you can tell it's Rebirth Batman is because he's got like the yellow little thing around his little bat symbol, and he's got yellow around his bat belt. Um, really cool figures. As far as like scale goes to uh, to Marvel Legends, they can be a little bit shorter, so that's been like the most like the biggest complaint. But the cool thing is, is that um, they're really really nice Batman and Superman figures, in my opinion, especially the Batman. Batman sold pretty well today. Superman still kind of catching on. Um, I believe that they're a little bit more based on the Jim Lee art style, um, especially like the Superman face, if you see that. Um, 
So those uh, those are running right around twenty eight bucks, either uh, from us or your local comic book shop, or uh, yeah, pretty much those only because Toys R Us don't carry that that stuff. Because <laughs> Toys R Us don't carry much because Toys R Us is broke. They ah! got the good stuff. Yeah. So uh, twenty eight bucks, Batman, Superman. You know it's almost Christmas. Got to start thinking of these things. Next things next is the uh, we'll go with that guy. The thing that uh, that Trey had to get for himself and uh, also <laughs> for the star. It is a Artifacts Arrow statue. Uh, if you go too close, it's going to tweak out the camera. <laughs> uh, obviously, Arrow, um, popular DC show on, uh, on the CW. Um, this is the Green Arrow version. So it's a one-tenth scale pre-painted figure um, from our friends at Kotobukiya. It is from the Artifacts Plus line. Uh, I really like these figures a lot. I actually have a few Artifacts Plus figures and um, in my opinion, they're some of the better figures, especially because they're made out of PVC. This one will set you back about $75. They are a little bit more pricey because they are, you know, imports, but they are worth it. Um, if you've ever had, if you've seen like the boxes of the uh, the Marvel ones we've had, you have to kind of put the Marvel ones together. This one comes pre, pre put together for you. So even if you just like Stephen Amell and you want to have a st little Stephen Amell hanging out at the end of your desk, Who this wouldn't? is your thing. You know, I mean, I have Stephen Amell hanging out in my house all the time. I wish we were friends. MacGyver says he's got he's got his eye on the uh, the Black Panther statue we have. Yeah, it's the same people who did the Black Panther statue. No, no, I'm wrong about that. I'm completely wrong about that. That Black Panther statue actually was done by uh, the D the Diamond Select Gallery line, also quality and a little cheaper for those. Those are only about forty five bucks if that's the one you're thinking of. Um, what do you think? Should we grab the the worst thing that that we've gotten in a while? So About one of the opinions. one of the things, yeah, one of the things that we do um, around here from time to time is we get some horror figures. Uh, don't ask me why. I I am not a horror guy. Dan's Look at me spitting the head, spitting mad fire. He's a little scared. I'm a little scared. Yeah, I I am not a big fan of the good guy Chucky doll. Um, but we do have them back in stock, and it's from NECA. These actually came out quite a while ago, and I guess this is like the reissue. Um, NECA is is really fine quality, man. Like these guys do an absolute excellent job, especially for the horror fans in your life um, or yourself. If you've ever dreamed of having a little creepy doll just kind of hang out in your house and try to murder you, this is your this is your product. If you've ever uh, had a complete another nightmare and not been able to sleep last night and woke up at 3:30 in the morning because of this stupid thing, like Dan, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. dude, when I was a kid, this thing terrified me, and it still terrifies <laughs> me. At least it's not full size. But anyway, NECA does a really good job, and they keep the prices down. We get them directly from NECA, so it's only 25 bucks. So, um, you know, we get some horror stuff in here. We don't get a ton, but when we do get stuff, it's from NECA, so it's quality. 25 bucks to set you back. We've got a couple left, just so you know. Please come and buy them and get them the hell out of here. I, I don't ever want to see them again. You want one for Christmas? That's it. Gideon's getting I'm one good. for his birthday. I'm good. Gideon's getting one for his birthday. That's, oh, that's pretty close to what it feels like to have a mm -hmm. two-year-old anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, having a Chucky doll? Everything hey, burns. You, are you not hiding the knives? Everything burns. Um, so with the next set, um, we're going to have to do these almost like as a, as a set here. So maybe oh. I'll hold a couple, you'll hold a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so for a while there, we weren't really carrying these things because I can tell you guys the markup for these is absolutely terrible. That chunky watch me when I click the wall, I just like it. What? <laughs> Tristan, oh, the, that Chucky watches me. Watches when I, me when I click the wall. Click the wall. What does that mean? I have no idea. Um, and that's Tristan. So she's either she must be drunk or her fingers have gotten so small that she can't type anymore. She's so scared. So so scared. See, so terrified. It's causing people in the chat to freak out. Here. It's so crazy. So um, these right here, these are based on the. Uh, it's from the world's greatest heroes line. They're basically like reprint Migos in a way. Uh, this is from the Super Friends line. Everything is cloth. Um, obviously, this is like the Super Villains line. We got Scarecrow, Lex Luthor, Sinestro, and Brainiac. Um, these will set you back about 30 bucks a piece. They're pretty expensive. Um, it's They're cool figures if you're really into them. Um, the only problem for us, the reason we don't carry a ton of them anymore, is because the markup has absolutely sucked for us. Like These are these are got to the point where we can't discount them at all, even on sales. without. I mean, we would completely lose money. But for the completionists in your life, these things are actually pretty sweet, especially because they display well. Um, I know some people who do take them out of the box. The cool thing is about this plastic, they're just kind of pinched in pieces of plastic. So you can actually pop these things apart and display the piece and put them back. Um, some people think like, oh, you got to cut, cut open the plastic. 
Not true. You can display them without doing that and then put them back later if that's what you prefer. Otherwise, you know, they did a really good job with these cool little displays and stuff. You know, takes you back. Takes you back to the time of the Mego. If you're in that Mego stuff. But these are the Super Friends line. We actually have two more lines of this to show you. Um, so it'll go quick. Um, so this was the Super Friends line. Flip it. Hmm. It's almost like a dumb display. There's a, tr there's, a, there's a trick to There's it. the flash line. The flash line's actually pretty darn cool. Um, Mr. Mike Mack, who's in the chat, I think you picked up the reverse flash today, if I remember correctly. These are cool. I have the memory of a dyslexic elephant. I like these ones. So, these are super cool. It's the flash wave of these. So, you know, we've got ourselves uh, Captain Boomerang, the Trickster, reverse flash, and a regular flash. If you nasty. Regular. Um, the only problem I have is the, uh, the, the Captain Boomerang. Um, he didn't come with his little hat, which bothers me, because it's like, yeah. everyone knows, everyone knows, he always has his little hat. See, it's even there. Huh. But the funny thing is, is they did without his hat, and they left him bald, which is, like, totally the reason he wears the hat. <laughs> he usually has, him. like, the skullet and whatnot. Yeah, they're shaming him. Yep, so once again, this is, like, from the Flash line, so basically with the Flash, it's just about Flash and, and the rogues. Cool little, uh, cool little figures, once again, display really, really well. Really fun. But, yeah, him and his bald head, no hat. And then you got the trickster, <laughs> who's just, you know, the trickster. He does stuff, like tricks people. <laughs> does he look like Mark Hamill? Uh, maybe? He's got a blonde hair. Not not Mark Hamill now. Um, last ones we got, we mainly got it um, because we have a guy here who's, like, the biggest fan in Michigan. So in order to get these for him, we have to order a case. So we, we had to <laughs> get more. So for you guys who keep on shouting, you keep on shouting. Um, you can rock and roll all night and party every day with uh, the Kiss Destroyer figures. Um, made by the same company, the Figures Toy Company. These will set you back right around 30 bucks a piece as well. Um, but, you know, we don't get a ton of rock and roll stuff in here. Um, when we do, I guess it's going to be Kiss. So we got some of those guys. You got the Catman. We got the, the, the space guy and, and whatnot. I've never been a huge Kiss fan. But, you know, honestly, whenever we do get some Kiss stuff in here, it usually kind of sells. So, I mean, why not, right? So, once again, part of the Mego line, everything in here is uh, is made out of real cloth and whatnot. And, uh, you know, Catman's got his got his chest open. So does uh, so does the, the star guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can probably glue your own chest hair on there if you wanted to have his yeah, real chest shave, hair. Shave a little mustache. Just whatever you want to do, you know. Yeah. Just get get wild with it. Um, it's not what I would do, but yeah. The Kiss dolls are scarier than the Chucky dolls. <laughs> yeah, if you get... Uh, if you get uh, Gene Simmons alone with, with you, then yeah, I would totally agree with that. He can he can be a little creepy. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this stream is we actually had somebody um, somebody donate something pretty cool today, and uh, we're gonna give this thing away at the end of the stream. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. So we got this little this little Funko Pop guy. It's the oh, Deadpool Ven Venom uh, Funko Pop. It is um, from Pop in a Box exclusive. This was donated by one of the members at the, at the uh, at the store today. He was like, "Here, man," and I was like, oh, "Are you trying to trade this?" He's like, "No, I told you I was gonna let you uh, let you give it away on stream." So, this is from uh, from one of the people that hangs out in the stream and also hangs out at the store. So, thank you, Mr. Diaz. It's very generous of you. Um, if you do not live in Michigan, I will ship it to you. If you live out of the country, unfortunately, you are SOL because I am not shipping overseas. I'm sorry. I'm just not. You shouldn't live overseas? I'm, I'm not. You should, yeah, you should live in America. It's great here. Yeah, we don't have any problems at all. None at all. Yeah. No. No. Hmm. Everything's, everything's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. Who told you it wasn't fine? <laughs> hmm? Sorry. Sorry. So we're going to give that away at the end of the stream. Should be fun. So uh, we have toys and stuff? So are we going to comics? I think Is so. it comics time? I think so. Pal. Yeah, it's comics time. All right. What do you think we start with some DC? Heck yeah. Start with some DC? Okay. DC's infinitely better than Marvel. <laughs> Jeez, man. We Just haven't kidding. even started I yet. Like You're already trashing everybody. I like everybody. them both. Oh, boy. This is rough. Um, so, first things first. Um, we're going to start with a, a, a Batman book. Uh, it's been uh, it's been kind of on top of a lot of people's lists as far as subs go. Um, written by uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. I got that right? Well, I guess it's just Sean Murphy on here, huh? Written. Cutting the Gordon out. And done. By the same dude, so he's writing it, he's drawing it. Um, I don't think he, I don't think he's doing the colors. The colors, I believe, are about, is Matt Hollingsworth. Yep. yep, color and covers, and a lettering by Todd Klein. Um, 
so it's an Elseworlds book. Basically, um, the Joker, uh, Batman chases down the Joker. The Joker has decided that he believes that Batman is the reason that Gotham is so bad. So in order to do that, the Joker basically dares everybody and says, look, I will cure myself with these little pills and I can do the, I can save this city way better than Batman ever could. It goes from there. It's an interesting Elseworlds and it's, it's an interesting flipping the script between a uh, hero and villain, but you read this. I did. Think? I did. I liked it a lot. The thing that I really enjoy, and I read an interview earlier, this is one of the only, if not the first, DC book that has allowed like full self-referential artwork in it. They usually steer away from that. Okay. What do you mean by that? Explain to us now. I don't know. Non-art, art, tights. What's the spoiler? Are we, are we... Um, no, nah, don't don't spoil it because some people they do get the books and they they haven't read them yet. Um, they haven't had time because people just get home from work. Is there any way to to explain that without without spoiling? Not really. No, I know. Okay. Let's let just let it be a surprise. Okay. Okay. If you've enjoyed all past iterations of Batman, which I mean, come on, keep your eyes peeled for all through all the panels. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I see what you're getting at now. Yeah. There. There's a. There's a lot of little hidden gems in this book actually, which is cool because mm-hmm. you can tell that it, that is definitely written by a long time a Batman fan and also drawn by a long time Batman fan, um, which always helps. You know. Um, but you can tell that this is a story that he's been working on for a while, and it's something that he really want. He really felt that he could do well, um, which is great because now he's gonna he's doing it, and um, so far so good. It is eight issues, so we're hoping that that it stays on track. A lot of times when these guys write and draw something, it can uh, it can be rough going for a while, <laughs> so it can get behind and stuff. But he seems to to, to keep a pretty good schedule. Um, most of the stuff he's been doing uh, over the past several years has been very, very quality. So it's just the first issue. Try it out if you like. We do got a bunch here at the store. Otherwise, uh, any of your local comic book retailers, don't buy it from Amazon. Amazon sucks. You know, buy it from from somebody somewhere. Even if it's just a guy in a corner peddling books, hmm. you know, buy it from that guy too. So excited for the next one. We'll, we'll revisit Definitely. this in the future for sure. Um, so obviously we we keep talking about Dark Knights, man. Like the Dark Knights metal. That's been the uh, the creme de la creme as far as uh, a lot of things that have been going on. I've been feeling a lot of the side stuff has actually been better than the regular metal stuff, um, but that's mainly because we've only gotten two issues of metal right now. Um, it's coming out a little slower. A lot of the stuff they're doing are big ideas, so it, it can be a little confusing, especially for our layman's at home. Um, but if you're a big fan of DC, it's dropping lots of little hints and lots of little like fun stuff that they haven't done in years, so it's a great time. Um, This week we had the big crossover finally wrap up, um, which went throughout four different books, and it was just a fun little, you know, heroes versus villains thing. That wrapped up very nicely, and it opened the door to kind of do stuff in the future, which is also very cool. But we also got our third of the Dark Universe Batman. Mm -hmm. Now, first off, we got the Red Death, then we got the Murder Machine. Now we have Batman the Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker. So first off, badass name. The Dawnbreaker? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a really great, um, really great almost Green Lantern story in a way. In the fact that um, Bruce, you know, sees his parent, his Karen, Karen's, <laughs> his parents killed. Thank you. Hi, Dyslexia. Nice to see you again. Um, he sees his parents killed, and because he has the ability to overcome great fear, he, he essentially gets a Green Lantern ring. Well, giving a kid a Green Lantern ring right after his, he just saw his parents murdered, probably not the best idea. So it goes from there. I'm not going to say any more because it would literally be spoilers from then on out. But needless to say, uh, because, you know, everyone knows Batman, he's got that will. Um, he ends up kind of doing something to the ring that, that he probably shouldn't do. And no, he did not stick it up his butt. Get your get your heads out of the gutter here. I know, right? You might be the only one that went there, Dan. <sighs> What can I say? I, I read my audience. I read the room. I read the room. Um, even through chat, you know. I'm, I'm in your minds. You are pretty sleuthy. I am. Very much so. Villain club. So, uh... <laughs> so, anyway. Keeping with, like, the first two, the Red Death and the Murder Machine, we've got a little bit of, like, creepiness to these. These guys are, uh... I, these guys are definitely playing with the dark multiverse thing. So, I don't know if it was an editorial thing where they were like, hey... Make this dark. Like we don't care. This is the dark multiverse. This it's is dark. this is this is supposed to be nasty. So what did you think? It 
it actually surprised me in how brutal it was. It it really <laughs> caught me off guard. Yeah. In a really fun way. It's it really feels like a metal concert. A metal concert? Seriously. Nah. <laughs> and and Ozzy's biting the, the heads off bats. It's pretty much each one has has that intense. very much like this is gonna be hardcore kind of vibe to it, you know. It is. Um they've been selling pretty well at the at, at the store, which has been great obviously, but also they're really easy to sell when they're awesome. Um the Red Death, we're finally down to like our last two copies. Um we still got a ton of murder machine left, but um the Red Death was the Sorry. same was the same way after like the first week. And then by the time it got to like the second week, it was like, you know, it's gone. So I fully expect these to continue to sell. Um, eventually, I'm going to put sets together of all of them. But so far, so good. We're three for three, in my opinion, um, mm-hmm. as far as these go. Um, even if you're just reading the main Batman story and, and you're not real big on, on crossover stuff, I would suggest checking these out because I think that you dig them for sure. And uh, most places still have some. If they don't, hey, man, you can always swing by here. We got some. Got what you need. So, yeah, excellent job from, uh, let's see here, I believe it was uh, Humphreys and Van Skyver. Mm-hmm. Sure was. Of course, they don't put any of the any of the info up front. Yep, Humphreys and Van Skyver. Humphreys wrote it. Van Skyver was on the ones and twos. Great stuff, especially if you've ever decided wanted to see what Batman would be like with as a Green Lantern, only a little bit mentally ill. <laughs> He's crossed the line. Speaking of mentally ill. There's the uh, there's this man Me? called the Shadow. He's a bit kooky, and uh, lately Dynamite and DC have been teaming up, and they just uh, they just did an excellent Shadow Batman crossover, mm-hmm. and it was really good to the point that we got a new one this week where I was like I had to do a double take because I saw the the variant and was like what because yeah. we got the variant and I thought that the variant was something they forgot to send us from the previous stuff because Diamond's done that shit to us. We're like, here's a variant. And it's like, this book came out like nine months ago. Why is this here? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. So I thought that happened again. And Trey's like, no, man, it's a, it's a whole new whole new day. I was like, oh, okay. So we got this. Sh- this time it's not Batman in the shadow. This time it's the shadow and Batman. So completely different book. So, um... This has been absolutely excellent. These two characters were kind of meant to be together as far as that goes. Um, this one plays out a little bit more of like a murder mystery instead of like the big, you know, overwhelming shadow ideas. Really, really good stuff. Did I hit record? Yes, I hit record. What, my first day or something? <laughs> <laughs> I did that like three times in a row. It was awful. Well, that's um, so as far as uh, this one is done by Steve Orlando, Giovanni Tipano, and uh, Flavio Dispenza. So uh, a lot of Italian in this book, I guess. So it starts off with uh, one of the creepiest villains, in my opinion, which is Professor Pig. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is goddamn terrifying, like the most terrifying villain. I think he's more terrifying than the, than, than the Joker. That's just me. He is uh, he's creepy. Um, but overall, the mood is, of the book is really is cool. Face? Yeah, he's the pig guy. The pig, many, no, is, that, is that what creeps you out? The pig face? No, it's because of the idea of him like making you in those dollatrons. Yeah, I those guess those creepy, creepy like yeah. zombies that like have those baby faces or whatever, man. That's got It's you and dolls. Terrifying. Huh? I hate dolls. You don't like man. Chucky. You don't like the dollatrons. Fuck no, dude. They look weird. Looks super weird. So anyway, um, so Batman and uh and Shadow end up teaming up in there and they're doing some crime fighting stuff, but uh. Also, this one's including Robin and a little bit more of, like, the Batman mythos. So, what do you think so far? Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, Damien is my favorite Robin. Wow. Um, Shots fired. I'm just... Shots fired. I'm just saying. I'm a duck here. I think something's going to um, jump to the chat and kill you. I like Damien, but I, I'm a Tim Drake guy. Tim's awesome, too. Yeah, I was Tim. just going to say, I, th- I thought Damien's voice felt a little off in this book yeah i can see that no i I can totally see that for sure damien is uh he's kind of a tough guy to 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 do right he's this cocky asshole (laughs) who wants to be batman so bad you know and that's like his his ultimate goal is is for bruce to retire but anytime anybody gets in the way of him and bruce's relationship he gets real 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 fierce about it you know so No, I, I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it, though, and I love The Shadow. So any book that I can read The Shadow in, especially with Batman. Doing a great job. Dynamite's, is Dynamite's doing fantastic. a good job. So it, it's good because The Shadow book, I've talked about on stream here before, The Shadow book is very, very good. 
Um, baby Batman is my son, and I love him. <laughs> That's weird, man. <laughs> she works here, too. I'm going to start watching her. Freak. Freaks, man. They're all freaks. So anyway, Batman, or the, sorry, Shadow and the Batman, available in stores. Really cool stuff. I guess we're going to move on to some Marvel. After uh, uh -huh. after my my colleague here has already thoroughly trashed them, hey. Hey. Um, I, I guess we'll I guess we'll do some some Marvel even though I guess everybody hates it or whatever. Don't get me wrong, I like Marvel too. But that's not how this is gonna go because I can tell you right now it's the fall, it's October, it's pumpkin spice Dan in the building. Ooh. It's all about the positivity, Ooh. the positivity. Spicy Dan, spicy indeed. Spirits of vengeance. Number one, what is the Spirits of Vengeance? Well, if you were around in the mid-90s, you remember that Marvel used to have a bunch of horror characters. Uh, mainly uh, uh, Damon Hellstrom, um, Morbius, Blade, uh, I'm forgetting the, the other guys. Uh, Ghost Rider, obviously. This book, this book very much picks up with uh, Johnny Blaze in a bar, hanging out, doing his, doing his bar thing. And he gets visited by this uh, this demon, and all this stuff kind of goes from there. He, this demon was shot with something that he's not supposed to have. He gives it to Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze tells him to take it to, to Damon Hellstrom, and they go from there. Well, Damon Hellstrom kind of thinks he knows what it is, but he just, he's decided to call in some help, and so it goes from there. Um, great setup book. Really, really, really mm -hmm. good setup book. And uh, I actually like this book a lot. Um, I usually talk about all the number ones anyway, unless I thought it was like complete dookie, then I tend just to kind of ignore it, because I don't think it helps anybody to sit there and trash everything. Um, but I really like this book. For one, uh, we got our traditional Ghost Rider back, which don't get me wrong, I like Robbie Reyes, and I love the idea of Ghost Rider as a muscle car. I dig it all day long. But it's still fun to see, uh, see Johnny Blaze back in the saddle again, um, pun intended. Um, so, so far, so good. And I'm hoping that, that this continues. It's going to be a limited series, only six issues, which I think is important because if they try to re revive these guys and do an ongoing series, I think nobody would read it. I mean, it's, it's a tough sell today anyway. It's not selling very well yet. I'm hoping to turn that around. Did you read this? I did. What do you think? I was surprised at how much I liked it. See? I, that's what I'm saying. I've See? actually never had a red Ghost Rider in the series. Like, I've never even cared to put it in my poll. But I read this and I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I have a soft spot for Blade, so I'm, I'm loving. Blade it. is one of those characters that I think everybody wants to be in a, a good book. Everybody's pulling for Blade, mm -hmm. but it's just vampires have been done, you know. And it's tough to do a vampire book nowadays in today's climate yep. because you know I mean the climate today is so anti-vampire, and, and I feel bad for for them being on the no-fly list or whatever. Um, that took a turn, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it, though. I, I, I have a soft spot for Blade. I feel like he's a better supporting character. So I'm, I'm loving, better in a team, which is funny because yeah, he's very much a loner. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, I love this team setup. It got me super intrigued. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a bunch of people who don't necessarily really like each other, but are just gonna work together in order to save the world. And uh, I am 100% okay with that. Yep. So, yep. so far, so good. Obviously, it's part of the Marvel Legacy line. Uh, written by Victor Gishler. Uh, artist was David Baldion. I think I got that pretty close. Yeah. Colors by Andres Mosa and uh, VCs Corey Pettit did the letters. So so far so good, man. If you're looking for something a little bit different in the Marvel universe where it's not all convoluted like everything else, pick it up, roll it. I do have one question before we move on. Yeah. The stamps. What yeah. are those all about? Yeah, it's just another thing. Just a collector thing. Back back in the '90s, they used to do um like little tattoos and stuff, you know, or like coupons and stuff. And as far as the value of the book, if the if that stuff's missing, the value of the book goes down, mm. you know. So they're kind of going almost full '90s with this stuff. And they're gotcha. adding some stuff like that again. Um, so if you take it out of there, you're destroying your book. <laughs> but it's also meant for you to collect them all. So figure it out. Catch, catch twenty two. <laughs> That's what they call that. A catch twenty two. Uh, next book was something that uh, that that surprised John, it did. and and I told him to read it because you know, like I said, we're all about the number ones on on this show, and uh, you know, trying to give you guys some information if you were kind of unsure on some stuff, and uh, so I had John read this book, and he came back. He was like, "Dude, I was surprised by how much I like this book." And I'm I was adding like, yeah, it to my pull. So, um, Punisher the Platoon. Uh, we're back under the Marvel Max banner, which is very interesting. So as you can see, the little Max banner down down here. Um, written by Garth Ennis, and uh, this is done by Par Parlov, I believe, and uh, Jordi Belair. Um, 
Yeah, Goran Parloff did did the art, and then I believe Jordi Belair did did all the. Uh, yeah, Jordi Belair did, did all the colors. Of course, she colors like 19 books a month. So, um, Punisher of the Platoon, it's very much kind of taking place around the same time as Punisher Born, which also was written by Garth Ennis. It's about uh, Frank's time in, in Vietnam, um, as told from the perspective of people who were like in his platoon. So, he has just now come back to, for his third tour of Vietnam, and he's taking over this one platoon, and it just goes from there. It's. Garth Ennis at his best, which he writes a lot of uh, military stuff. He's very military oriented, but it's not to the point of like it's. It doesn't bore you. It, you're you're waiting for something very important to happen. You really feel like something important is going to happen, and there's a kind of a twist there where uh, the narration goes to a different place, and it kind of throws everybody for a loop. Really, really cool though so far. I did thoroughly enjoy it. It felt. It felt almost Tarantino-y. Like, okay, it was, yeah. like, they were, I was looking more at, like, really well-done storyboards for a solid film. Than I, it, it, like, it just pulled me right into the book. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thought, oh, Punisher, I'm going to be getting into, like, a superhero story. And looking at this comment we have here, uh, Mirage said, Gave up on superhero comics back in the, in the 2010s. Tired of remakes, reverts, rewinds, rehashes, reboots. This, it happens. This didn't feel like a superhero book at all. It felt like a really well-told... Uh, military book you're, you're seeing the side of this person that you've never seen before and i like i was very surprised by it well with them being in vietnam obviously you're not going to get the punisher wearing punisher gear and going around being the punisher mm -hmm. um you're going to start seeing the personality of frank castle more than anything else and what forged him into being the punisher after his, fa his parents died it's more of a if you're a fan of the movie platoon you'll be a fan of this book um, I know right now, like, with uh, Ken Burns just came out with, like, the Vietnam documentary on PBS, so it's kind of in everybody's forefront brain. Um, I, I would check this out if you're looking for something different. And, yeah, man, if you're if you're sick of uh, remakes and rehashes and superhero stuff, hey, dude, I don't blame you. There's there's way too much of it. It does happen. It rubs some people the wrong way. This one's a little different, though. Um, so, like, like we said, it's more of a war story than anything else, but it could lead into some superhero stuff later, and then you're going to want to burn everything down around you, so... But if you're looking for something different, you definitely check it out. But stick around, man, because we're going to talk about some some indie stuff too, um, not just superhero stuff. It's uh, it's just my job to kind of go through all the superhero stuff too, because we like to talk about everything. So next, but not let's see, here. we got two more left in the Marvel the, the Marvel pile. The only reason I'm bringing this one up because I dug the interaction between these two. I don't think you had time to read this. Yet. I did not have time. To so read this, this is like one of the first books that went back to the legacy numbering and Iron Fist number seventy three. Now, on the cover, as you can see, we got Iron Fist, we got Sabretooth. Why is this important? Well, for as far as, like, history of aficionados, Sabretooth was not originally a Wolverine villain. He was not originally an X-Men villain. He was an Iron Fist villain. So, they're literally, when they say legacy, they're going back to the roots. You know, like, they, they decide that they want to have a story where it's uh, Iron Fist and Sabretooth. And they're going to do a team-up. So, it's very much Sabretooth being like, I don't want nothing to do with you. They end up fighting, obviously, because that's what Sabretooth does. <laughs> he just likes to fight everybody. Um, it's a fun story that's now turning into kind of a team-up book between two people who really can't stand each other. Um, so if you're a fan of Sabretooth, you know, generally being Sabretooth and being kind of an asshole, um, you'll definitely be a fan of this book. If uh, if you've been liking the Iron Fist book, nothing has changed. Everything is, is still as fun as it was. I really like the Iron Fist book a lot because... It mainly reminds me of uh, old school Chinese um, Chinese uh, martial arts flicks, where it's got a little bit of like the supernatural and stuff, but it, it's mostly fun and a lot of the things that like they name like like as kicks, like you know, crane of a thousand kicks. That to me is hilarious. I love that shit. <laughs> Any kind of tongue tongue and cheek stuff like that, I, I'm okay with 100. percent so, if you're looking for something a little different, um, especially uh, for the Iron Fist stuff, this is definitely your book. It's it's a lot of fun so far. So, I'm digging it. So, so far, so good with the Iron Fist Legacy reboot. Well, reboot? Not really a reboot. They're just kind of continuing. They just changed some numbers, I guess. So, uh, this book, I'm not going to get too far into, but mainly I had to bring this up because uh, I'm a huge fan of the show Star Wars Rebels. Um, Star Wars Rebels has been absolutely... You know, almost top of the list as far as like great Star Wars stories. Um, in one of the seasons, we they introduced somebody called the Grand Inquisitor. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan or if you watch the show Rebels, the Grand Inquisitor was tasked by uh, the Emperor to hunt Jedi. That's basically his job. Well, 
in Darth Vader, number six, we got on our cover the Grand Inquisitor. So when I first saw this cover last week, I was like, holy crap. Because first off, or last week, last month's, um, oh, hey, thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Um, last month's um, Darth Vader, I kind of told everybody on the stream it was like one of my favorite comic books of the year. Like from the front cover to the back cover, I thought it was just masterfully put together. And I even said, even next month's advertisement was, was in there that was like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. This was the advertisement. Because the first thing I uh, my question was during Star Wars Rebels, man, these Inquisitors are really cool. I hope they do some background on them. They never did it. And I think it's because they fully intended to maybe do it as a comic mm -hmm. or novel. Because now they're doing it as a comic. And I'm like, holy crap. So you're getting Vader's interaction with these Inquisitors. We're getting more history of why they exist and what their point is. And uh, like kind of you know who they are and, and why they were plucked by the Emperor to do this. I was blown away by this. Like, it was really, really cool to the point that Charles Soule is like, please write Star Wars stuff forever, man. <laughs> he's writing, I feel like he's writing everything. He, he is writing, and he's a practicing attorney. He is? You didn't know that? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Jeez. a practicing attorney, and he writes like six books juice. a month. The guy's a genius. Holy moly. He really, really is, and he's a nice guy. He's actually friends with Chris over at Comics and More. Um, really? Yeah, they go way back, I guess. And uh, he's had some signings over there. Um, I got my Death of, Death of Wolverine signed by him because Chris came by and just brought a bunch of books over there to sign and brought them back for us. That's and, awesome. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. So uh, I digress. Sorry about that, guys. You know, um, So start in the new Darth Vader series if you really want a cool Star Wars thing. If you, if you hate Star Wars, obviously, just you know, move on. <laughs> it's all good. But especially with with Rebels coming, this is this is your book. It really, really is. This is all in canon. Crap. Right? Yeah, yeah, all, all the comic book stuff now is now in canon. That's what I thought. Which is great. Um, so we're going to go with the last couple of things here. Um, we like to do some indie stuff. One of the things um, is called Eugenic, written by James Tenney in the fourth. Ooh, uh, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's doing the detective comics book right now, which is like, holy shit, is that good. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's literally one of my favorite great, DC books. Great team book, man. It's not mm -hmm. so Batman-centered. It's more centered about the people around him, um, especially uh, you know Cassandra and uh, Batwoman and uh, really great stuff. This book is not that. <laughs> uh, done by Eric Donovan, uh, James Tinney IV, and uh, D. Cunifee. Um It's a book called Eugenic. Mm -hmm. It's done by Boom Studios. Basically, it takes place in the future. It's more of a, uh, it's once again like a plague book. I know some people are like, oh my god, a walking dead again. It's not zombies. Essentially what happens, um, there's this thing in, what is it, 2022, someone develops this thing known uh, in the Mississippi Delta called the Red Cough. After a while, it turns out the Red Cough is extremely, you know, catchy and, and, and people get it. Ton of, tons of people die. <coughs> They introduce this... Don't cough on me. <laughs> they introduce this guy named Dr. Cyrus Crane out of Madison, Wisconsin, which was kind of funny because I lived in Madison for like seven years. Really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> before I moved back here and became this awesome this awesome sensation that you see here. <laughs> no words to describe. <laughs> With my like three subscribers on YouTube or whatever. <laughs> well, that's about, to, ex that's I'm about famous. to explode, baby. I'm famous. Well, that's yeah, look at this pretty face. Look at this. Look at this. Eye candy. Oh, you can do that both eyes? That's, that's great. Is that how you got your wife? Just the, the eyebrow stop, thing? What the rock? Wait, I can't stop. So essentially with this character, Dr. Cyrus Crane, um, he develops a, uh, a way to fight the virus, and it's a vaccine. So with the vaccine, he gives it to everybody, and he is like the savior of the day. He is the guy. He basically saved the world. Well, this guy decided that, well, one of the problems with the world, he wanted to remake the world, so he resequenced everybody's DNA through this Hmm. Through, through this vaccine. So the problem with this is that by resequencing the DNA, anybody who's having children now are having essentially like freaks. Like their mouths are in different places, mm. their, their skin color is like purple, and he decides to tell people, you know, he tells like this room full of people like, yeah, I did that on purpose. All these genetic defects are absolutely 100% meant to be this way because I wanted everybody to be together and and everyone to be perfect and to get rid of all this stuff so then it like goes from there hmm. so he eventually so now at the like towards the end of the book i don't want to give everything away but the next issue is supposed to take place like 20 years in the future to see if his dream was realized with all these different freaks if they survived and went from there dude it's it's out there 
but man, it, it brings up some interesting stuff, and mm. it's like it's it's wild. It's wild. Color me intrigued, especially from Boom Studios, which is a little bit known more for some of their kid titles, mm-hmm. you know, than anything else. Um, and all ages titles and and teen titles, they do a great job at studio. But this was really out there, and and mm. it's something different. Um, this is actually our last copy because Trey was like, I don't know about this book, man. So he only ordered a few. <laughs> but I, I like to cover some of the weirder books. I did one for last week too, and actually uh, Jim, who's in the chat, he actually uh, he actually ran through to, uh, last last week and picked up one of the one of the smaller books that I mentioned. So weird book, check it out if you can. Otherwise, uh, you know, don't if you don't want to. But I can tell you, it's it's out there and it's different. So, uh, for, for uh, Mr. Mirage Leonardo, something different. Not superhero related. Out there. <laughs> uh, and from Image, we have a new number one this week. I actually um, got the ash can for this book. Ash cans are like little things they'll send us in the mail about this big from the studios where we can read them and they try to boost sales. Uh, the cool thing about ash cans is that, you know, I get, I get a little bit of a, a peek, you know, beforehand. Uh, it was only in black and white, but I really enjoyed the story. It's basically about um, a down on his down on his luck kind of hustler slash gambler. Um, he's decided to go back to Vegas one last time to try to right some wrongs, and it goes from there. I can tell you right now, man, if this doesn't get option for a TV show, I would be absolutely shocked. <laughs> this thing is written to be a Ray Donovan-ish kind of TV show, mm-hmm. um, except for without all like the revenge and badassery. This guy is basically a loser in a way, and he kind of knows he's a shitbag and a loser. Um, he's a con man. He's back in Vegas doing con man stuff, and it goes from there. He's helping out an old friend. He's decided that this is him writing wrongs. And uh, he's going to re- reconnect with, with family. And he's also an ex-boxer as well. So it is an, it is an image comic. Um, it's actually bon- done by Skybound. Uh, Skybound um, is uh, Kirkman's imprint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, from the big boss, he's the one who, who decided that he wanted it. He wanted it printed. Uh, we do have a bunch of these left. Um, I guess it hasn't been getting too much hype, so I decided to hype it here. I really enjoyed it. Um, I believe the whole thing is done by one person. Um, yeah, Dan Panosian, uh, creator, writer, artist, um, even did the, did the colors and everything. Pat Brousseau, uh, did, did the lettering so far. So good. Um, as you can see, the art is very, very, very stylized. It's kind of, um, Southern bastards esque in a way, I would say, especially the color palette. It's, uh, you know, very warm tones, but obviously it's the desert, so that is correct. You wouldn't be doing a bunch of blue for the desert if you do. That's a little nuts. <laughs> That's a little nuts. Uh, Moonstruck number three is out today, um, but I'm not going to, uh, to talk about Moonstruck three today because, like, you know, I try to keep it fresh with the newer stuff. But yes, Moonstruck three is out today. We do have it. Um, if it wasn't on the shelf, Jim, just let me know because I know for a fact I have one here. Um, we love Moonstruck here. If you haven't read it yet, you should check it out. It's, it's a fun little book, it, real fun little to, book. I wanted to check it out. But anyway, slots number one. We've got uh, a few left, something different, and I can almost guarantee it'll get option to be a TV show or a movie or something. I'd be shocked if it didn't. It may never, never happen, but you know, it's probably gonna happen. <laughs> it wasn't in your box. That's not okay. I'll get it taken care of, Jim. Sorry about that, brother. Um, I'll have to check and make sure. Maybe it didn't get added or something. Um, I'll, I'll take care of you, though, man. I know for a fact I got one, like, within, like, arm's reach of me. So I'll get you taken care of. And, yes, the guy looks kind of like Negan. <laughs> Speaking of Negan, they actually finally collected the uh, the, the, the Negan storyline of his uh, history and stuff. Um, but I didn't have any more hardcovers left because they all sold today. So, But anyway, though, any last words? Uh, no. Is that... However, is that eugenic book spoken for? You sold me. You want to check it out? I do. All right. See? That's what we do here. That's what we do here. No problem. I blame Tristan. Yeah, I blame Tristan all the time too, man. So anyway, kids, um, that is your Warp 9 Wednesday. Hopefully we gave you some information that you will enjoy. Have any questions for me? Email me at Warp 9, com- Warp, or <laughs> Warp 9 Comics. Don't email the shop. Uh, ExtraSecretGaming at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can, you know, you can hit me up in the shop. Have you the Dungeons and Dragons graphic novels by IDW? I think they've been around since 2011. No, because we're not really much of a of a gaming store, um, so we don't really carry a lot of like the Dungeons and Dragons books or like the comics. I can always check to see if they're available for order. I'd be happy to order them for you, man, uh, or woman. I'm sorry, I shouldn't assume. 
Um, but no, we don't tip, we don't t uh, typically carry them, and we don't kind of go backwards with a lot of stuff because there's so much out there, and, and we we do a lot of uh, we do like a lot of collectibles on the wall too. So um, you know we can't carry every little story. Unfortunately, we're not like your traditional comic book shop. We we got our hands in everything. So can you put one aside for me? I won't be able to get one until Monday because I'm I'll probably have to order it. Um, so, uh, yeah, shoot me, uh, shoot me an email or shoot the shop an email at warp nine comics. Uh, first, last name, if you remember, obviously, and I'll let, let me know and I can get that ordered for you. I think I should be able to get my hands on some more, but I think we only had a couple of copies. So wait, is he talking about, you're talking about Mirage, right? Or not Mirage, sorry. Eugenic. Oh, I thought he was talking about, uh, slots. Are you talking about slots? MacGyver? Wasn't he, wasn't he the one talking about, he looked like Negan? Yeah, but then we were talking about eugenics because oh, we were grabbing right. that one. So slots. Okay, yeah, man, I can take care of you. Not a problem. Um, it's Diaz, right? MacGyver. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Everybody's got their their gamer name, so yeah, wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, any last? Uh, yep. Any any? Yep. Okay, I know, but see. Any, any uh, last, uh, what was your favorite thing out of the stuff you read this week? I know I kind of put you on the spot. I forgot to give John some some reading stuff last night, so he had to kind of run through some stuff today. And he's got, like, two kids, a, a career, and a, and, and a wife, so he's got, you know, he's busy time. Not like Dan, who's got dogs and video games. I'm so know, alone. Surprisingly, I think, so it alone. Was, I think it was... Hmm. <laughs> surprisingly, I think it was the Punisher book. Yeah. See, you just never know, man. I, I you never it a know. Lot. It was and really well paced. The art was, the stylized art was cool, and the story was surprising. Recipe for me liking it. It was way different. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed that book too. I'm hoping it kind of goes because I, I felt like it was very Punisher born esque, you know. So it's mm -hmm. a bigger story, and then at the end you got your Punisher stuff, you know. But for the most part, it was it was more about the war than anything else. Um, yeah, the end of war, jokes and riddles. Um, that that happened today for sure. Um, no, don't spoil anything. I know. I'm not. That's why I wasn't going to talk about it today. Um, so it ended. I think it's going to be one of those stories that's going to be great to uh, to read to read as a whole collection and and go from there. It should be it, it should be fun. So, but uh, yeah, that's your Warp Nine Wednesday. Brought to you by Extra Secret Gaming and uh, Warp Nine Comics. Um, any questions, like I said, hit me up. Otherwise, uh, Extra Secret Podcast is on iTunes. We have a new episode up as of uh, yesterday. No, Monday. Um, so check that out, too. Uh, rate, and post a written view, whatever. And, um, yeah, I think that's going to be just about it. You want to give any shout-outs to, to, to anybody? Um... No, no, don't want to do I'm a shout, so shout out to your brother or anything, so or, or, or your kids, Justin, or, or your kids. Oh, I told no, my oh, my kids. kids were gonna watch, um, but I highly doubt they're still awake. Okay, yeah. Well, if I know your kids are. are watching, I wouldn't have been dropping any of them. I love you, Gideon. <laughs> my bad. Damn, such uh, bad I know, dude. I gotta clean it up. Uh, anyway, so this show will be on. Uh, It'll be on YouTube probably by Friday night. So if, if you missed oh, part giveaway. of this or you had to run away. Oh, yeah, we got to do the giveaway. Jeez, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Thanks, little T. Tristan's keeping you in um, line. Yeah, give me one second. I got to set this up. That's probably how it is every day here, right? What? Tristan keeping you in line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, man. We're going to do the giveaway. Give me one second here. I got to bring up the Nightbot stuff. You're welcome. I know. Sorry about that, guys. See, I get rolling, and I'm like, it's the end of the day. I'm finally going to get a day off tomorrow. And then I'm like, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Let me set this up, and then we're going to give some stuff away. Um, but this is your chance to give them your rendition of a Bruno's Mar Bruno Mars song. So I was actually doing Moana. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Wow. That's all I hear. That's wow. all I hear. Uh, Listen to you all go. All day with kids. Wait, how does that song start? Um, Dan doesn't really want me to do this. Streamers, users. Okay, I think I remember. should be good. Okay, for those of you in the chat still around, um, we've done this before. Just give me an exclamation point. Give me G I M M E, and uh, whoever wins will win. And uh, Tristan, you know you can you, you you can do the giveaway too if you like. And uh, you know I don't mind. You know you weren't you weren't here at work today, so let's just hope she doesn't win because that's like <laughs> he wants it for he wants it for himself. Dan? 
Who does? Me? No. No, I'm done with Pops, man. Done with Pops. He's uh, he's had his fill of the Pops. Yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of, uh, of the Deadpool anyway. Although, I will say this. His book right now has been absolutely phenomenal. Really? Yeah. I heard... I heard otherwise. His current his book right this minute? Mm-hmm. See, the book before the Secret Empire stuff, just okay. The Secret Empire stuff, holy crap. That stuff was great. Hmm. Like I couldn't believe it. Like it was it was unbelievable. It really was. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think MacGyver is gonna gonna enter this because <laughs> it's his. <laughs> he's the he's the one who donated it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else, Spacker? You don't want to enter the. You don't want to enter to to try to win. You were just complaining to me today that, that you'd never win anything. He's probably got the sound down, so he's probably not even hearing this. He's probably busy playing Overwatch, or Destiny. Oh yeah, him and him and Trey are like playing Destiny together now. They're like they're like Destiny. Destiny I've friends. heard the second one's pretty good. I didn't play the first one. Um, I'm gonna wait for PC. I think. I don't know. Even though we did that short film. Did, did you ever see that short film we did, Dan? No, I saw all the Skyrim stuff that you guys did, though. That shit was hilarious. We did a Destiny short film. It was Skyrim, right? It's, we, did a, we did Skyrim. Yeah. You want to give a shout-out to your, your YouTube page? You can do that. Oh, maybe. So remember, exclamation point, G-I-M-M-E. I'm going to roll the dice here very, very, very soon because Dan is tired. <laughs> and I still need to go to the go to the grocery store. Yeah, I, I just guess I just don't really understand Destiny 2 so much. Like, I just don't... I I don't like playing multiplayer stuff, but I know that this is more like raids and whatnot, so that sounds kind of cool. But I will say this: I was watching the beta for uh, Battle or uh, Battlefront Two today, and uh, it looks really cool so far. But it's just the beta, so everyone's just running around shooting each other again. Um, I'm hoping that we're gonna get um, a good story. So, last call for the giveaway. Anyone? 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 No? 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 All right, let's hope, let's hope I did this right, because I don't want it to pick somebody who wasn't wasn't in here. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay. <laughs> oh man, people are gonna call shenanigans on this. <laughs> shenanigans. Everyone, get your broomsticks. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, Tristan won the giveaway. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, man. I think everybody else has kind of won stuff, too, though, That's that's been in the chat here. Unless, I, I hope, I think Mike's won some stuff before. Little T. Anyway, Little T, it'll be, uh, it'll be here for you tomorrow. Your name will be on it. So, um, I am going to do uh, a couple more giveaways on um, either Friday or Saturday this week. We're going to do some more Cuphead um, the video game mm. Cuphead, really fun. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, thanks for reminding me about the giveaway. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And, uh, thank you, man. Thank you. I want to get your brother in here next week. So then people just think it's the same person. <laughs> oh, he's back. We should. I'm an identical twin. He's an identical twin. One day we're going to have you both on here. It'll be great. We anyway, should. we should. Good night, everyone. Say good night. Good night. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs>